Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about the most important topic in 11th physics that is motion in a straight line. This motion in a straight line topics is belongs to mechanics. First of all, we will see uh, what is that mechanics. Generally, mechanics is a branch of physics. Mechanics is a branch of physics which deals about state and motion of the body. Mechanics is a branch of physics which deals about state and motion of the body. This mechanics can be divided into three types. First one, kinematics. Kinematics, first part. Second part, statics. And then, dynamics. Dynamics. Actually, first we can say that statics. Statics is nothing but which is a branch of mechanics which deals about the bodies which are under rest condition. Means what are the bodies are at rest condition that completely discussed in statics topics. But we are going in a motion topic. Okay, so this is not in this we are not going to discuss. Kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. Which deals about motion of the body motion of the body without cause of motion without cause of motion without cause of motion means generally we are not discussing about how the body is start or who projected the body or who throws the body we are not discussed just we discuss the body is in motion that's all. That means we are discussing about the motion of the body but without the cause of motion. What is the cause of motion? We are not discussing in kinematics. This kinematics we can divide it into again like three parts. First, motion in 1D. Motion in 1D. 1D means 1D stands for one dimensional. Next, motion in 2D. Motion in 2D. 2D stands for two dimensional. And motion in 3D. 3D means three dimensional. Okay. Again, we can discuss about deeply about this. Now comes to dynamics. Dynamics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body with cause of motion motion of the body with cause of motion generally what is the cause of motion the cause of motion is what is cause of motion yes the cause of motion is force for example now i am saying that a body is projected vertically upwards body projected vertically upwards projected vertically upwards that's we are discussing in this topic but with what force we are projecting the body that we are discussing here nothing but what is the cause of motion here it is not going by itself i am not using any magician here any magic here just that's not going by itself we need to give some force actually what is the cause of motion the cause of motion is force but we are not discussing about the force in this topic so here we are discussing about in the dynamics force and then Newton laws and then work, power, energy. So those are all comes under dynamics topic. Okay, now we'll come to this kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. Means which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. What is the cause of motion force is the cause of motion but here we are not discussing about the force we are not discussing about the force and this mechanics uh, this kinematics generally we can divide it into three parts 
motion in one d one dimensional actually that's only our topic motion in a straight line what is a one d what is the meaning of one d a body is moving in a particular direction means at any interval of time the body is having only one direction that we can say that motion in 1d best example if you consider if you're dropping your body from particular height that's we can say that freely falling body means if i'm dropping this body from this particular height so what is the direction the direction is vertically downwards so that we can say that 1d in case if you are projecting the body upwards projecting the body upwards so when which is going upwards then again the body is having 1d one particular direction that we can give the example of 1d motion and also the bodies are moving in a straight line also we can able to give the 1d and 2d 2d means a particle is having at a time two different directions two different directions best example circular motion why circular motion so see here the direction of the particle is continuously changes the direction of the particle continuously changes and the particle is having two different directions two different directions see here x positive x negative x positive y negative y means two different directions the particle here you can consider the particle is having two different directions here two different directions at anywhere you can consider the particle is having two different directions that we can able to give 2d motion and also projectile motion means any body you are projecting into the air with an angle theta so then the body motion we can say that 2d motion that is we our topic of motion in plane motion in plane now 3d motion 3d stands for three dimensional actually what is three dimensional three dimensional bodies are particles dust particles in the early morning when the sun light is enter into your home just if you are open the window then you can observe the small small dust particles what is the direction of the dust particles those are moving downwards no upwards no forward no backward no means we are not able to say those are moving in a particular direction they can move any particular direction in three dimensionally three dimensionally means like this forward this side this side so any particular direction they can able to move so that's we can able to give 3d what are the examples for 3d motion of the dust particles motion of the house fly motion of the house fly maki so how it is moving that can be moving in different directions and motion of the kite 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 also is moving in 3d only so this is about the simply the kinematics and now our topic now let's enter into our topic motion in 1d motion in 1d in motion in 1d what we are going to discuss about first we need to know about that what we are going to discuss about we are going to discuss about first thing motion parameters motion parameters what are the motion parameters parameters after that the bodies are moving in a particular means so we are giving the introduction of the motion parameters after that equations of motion equations of motion equations of motion this is second part and after that bodies are moving in a horizontal line horizontal line then on horizontal direction only one particular direction horizontal direction so then what about the equations of motion and what about the state velocity that is the motion parameters that's we are doing horizontal direction next about vertical direction so this is simply the total parts we are going to discuss about in uh, one day topic what are those motion in motion parameters equations of motion horizontal direction and vertical direction and let's we will move to we will discuss one about one another so first of all what is motion motion is nothing but a body said to be in motion when we can say that body is in motion yes the position of the body the position 
of the body is changes with respect to time with respect to time the position of the body changes with respect to time then we can say that the body is in motion time we are considering as a reference by the changing time if the position of the body changes so then we can say that the body is in motion what is rest rest means simple the position of the body does not changes the position of the body does not changes not changes does not changes with respect to time with respect to time so then the particle we can say that which is under rest condition rest condition so first thing motion position of the body changes with respect to time and second condition is position of the body does not changes with respect to time changes does not changes what are the examples for motion motion of the body is example you can able to give best example you have to give so the best examples are revolution of the planets around the sun revolution of the planets so what are the planets we have in our solar system that we can able to use the motion example and also uh, watch motion of the hands in our watch those are also in motion so that objects it, it need to be changed their position with respect to time rest condition rest means the position of the body does not change is what we can able to give the best example board it's not changing its position so that we can say that under rest condition so generally rest and motion both are related to rest and motion are relative what is the meaning of the relative relative means the appearance is continuously changes appearance is continuously changes what is the meaning of that see here for that i am taking one example there is a uh, here we are on the surface of earth earth a person is standing at the top of the building top of the building and one person is observing from him from the ground he just standing so i am giving the name a b b observes a according to b what is the state of a a is in motion or rest a is in motion or rest according to b yes a is at rest with respect to b with respect to b a at rest very good with respect to b a at rest but now one person is in observing from moon by telescope one person c c is observing a from the moon by telescope now what about the state of the a what about the state of the a a is in motion or rest yes a is in motion because earth is rotates na earth rotates along the earth the building rotates and he is the on the top of the building so that's it so that means with respect to c a is in motion a in motion so see here what is happened one person with respect to b at rest again same person with respect to c is in motion but which thing is right which thing is right in that which thing is right both are right both are right so that's why we can say that motion and rest are related means changes the appearance is changes for example just i am observing the board board is a rest condition with respect to me the board is a rest condition but if a person is observing from the moon by the telescope it is in rotation means it is moving along the surface of the means uh, means it is also rotates because earth is rotates so that's why this is in motion actually with respect to earth it is in motion with respect to moon it is in motion but with respect to earth it is a rest condition by the changing of appearance 
that should be changes so that's why we are using the term rest and motion or relative functions rest and motion are relative functions means it can, appearance can be changes both are true both are true but based on their background means from there from where we are observing that okay next we can take the types of motion what are the generally types of motion and what we are going to discuss here generally the types of motion are motion can be divided into generally based on their characters based on direction we divided the motion into three types motion in 1d motion in 2d motion in 3d but based on the characteristics of motion so motion can be divided into three types sorry four types translatory motion first thing translatory motion next rotatory motion rotatory motion and third oscillatory motion oscillatory motion what are those translatory motion rotational motion and oscillatory motion and also random motion random motion let's see one by one what is translatory motion so now we are going to discuss about this only main important translatory motion translatory motion is nothing but the motion of a particle in a particular direction means particular direction means that may be 1d may be 2d but it should be having a particular direction so that we can say that simply translatory motion so i'll give one example for the translatory motion so here i am considering a bus the bus contains 60 passengers and one driver total how many passengers 60 passengers and one driver here now the bus is moving in a strike line with velocity v in a strike line with a velocity v now what about the velocity of the driver velocity of the driver also v only what about the velocity of the passengers also v only means all particles of the body are having same velocity different particles of the body is having same velocity same displacement same acceleration then the motion we can say that a translatory motion different particles of the body is having same velocity same displacement same acceleration so that we can say that translatory motion simple translatory motion so translatory motion again linear motion and as well as curvilinear motion so like that we can divide it is moving in a straight line or it is moving in a curved path you in case bus is taking turn all passengers also takes the turn even driver also takes the turn that's not a matter whatever it at a particular each and every particle of the rigid body are having same velocity same displacement same acceleration then the motion we can say that translatory motion for example i am considering this body this body contains different number of particles different number of particles now the particle is moving what is the displacement traveled by the first particle same displacement traveled by the second particle also let's see here from here onwards i am taking see here this is the first last particle and this is the first particle how much displacement they travel how much distance for example from here to here m meters and here to here also m meters both particles are traveled same displacement same displacement and both are moving with same velocity both are moving with same velocity both are having same acceleration same direction so that's why this motion we can say that translatory motion so then what about rotational motion rotation motion naturally not our part okay no problem let's read this the motion of a particle about a fixed point means a body rotates or revolves around a fixed point means this particle only in case one edge is i'm fixing so then now who the particle is moves like this 
so this is comes under uh, rotational in rotational what is happening different particles of the rigid body are having different directions different velocities different accelerations we why because you can consider a body is rotating about a fixed point then what happen the particle at here having this direction the particle at here having this direction the particle at top this direction the particle at means different particles four particles are having different directions different velocities different acceleration how the velocity different what is the velocity of the particle at the center in rotational motion center does not moves but total body moves so that means velocity at the center zero but different particles are having different velocities next oscillatory motion Oscillatory motion means simply to and fro motion. To and fro motion of your body about a fixed point. That we can say that oscillatory motion. The to and fro motion of your body about a fixed point is called oscillatory motion. To and fro motion of your body about a fixed point. Pendulum best example. Random motion. Random motion means it comes under 3d also a body is moving without any particular direction so that can be moving zigzag like this so that motion we can say that translatory motion sorry random motion okay students uh, once if you want to write the definition write the definition of the translatory motion yes no doubt the motion of the body is said to be translational the motion of the body is uh, said to be translational. The different particles of the body, the different particles of the body are having same direction, same velocity, same displacement and same acceleration. Different particles of the body are having same velocity, same displacement same acceleration then the motion is translatory the motion is translatory and we will continue after this so let's we will move to motion parameters what are motion parameters motion parameters in motion parameters first of all we are taking about distance then displacement speed velocity and then acceleration acceleration Distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Generally, distance we are representing with a letter S, and it is a scalar function. What is scalar? Scalar means a physical quantity which is having only magnitude. Only magnitude is called a scalar function. If a physical quantity is having both magnitude and the direction that is called vector magnitude means a person is walking five meters five meters he walked five meters then five is the magnitude five meters you can take five meters is the magnitude in case if you have mentioned a person is walking five meters towards north five meter towards north 5 meters towards north or east whatever so here in case if you are mentioning the direction a person is walking towards east 5 meters so means here 5 meters is the magnitude this is we are mentioning the direction so that means that will be goes to the vector vector means a physical quantity a quantity which is having both magnitude and the direction that is called vector Okay, so distance generally we are representing with yes, and again we can discuss about scalars and vectors and displacement nothing but s bar displacement s bar bar represents vector speed v 
only v speed velocity v bar because it is vector it is scalar acceleration a bar acceleration is also a vector and let's see one by one we'll discuss first of all about the distance what is a distance distance is nothing but the total length of the path the total length of the path or else the original length of the path or else the actual length of the path length of the path the total length of the path is called distance and it's already i told you scalar functions and distance we are generally measuring the unit SI unit is meters. Meters. And what about displacement? Displacement is a vector function, but how do we define the displacement? Displacement is the the shortest distance. The shortest distance between two points between two points and line joining line joining from initial to final initial to final so the shortest distance between the two points and line joining from initial to final initial point to final point it is called displacement here one thing here yeah? distance depends on path followed by the body path followed by the body means what is the meaning of that how the particle is circulating how the particle is moving so what is the path followed by the body distance depends on path followed by the body but the displacement depends on only initial and final points. Distance depends on path followed by the body, which depends on path. Depends on path followed by the body. Path followed by the body. And it is independent on path. Independent on path, but depends on initial and final points. Depends on initial and final points. So very important points here. What are that? Distance depends on path followed by the body. It may depends on initial and final points, but the displacement depends on only initial and final points it's independent on path followed by the body so what is the meaning of that let's see so again we can give that this is a vector function again we are measuring in meters only so let's see one small example here here i'm considering a person he starts from point a and he has to be moved from A to is a traveled B up to B four meters and then B to C three meters A to B four meters B to C three meters A to B four meters or B to C three meters now Abhi what about the displacement and the distance of the person distance and displacement of the person actually according to the definition of distance hum kya bol sakte a to b 4 meter b to c 3 meters so what is the distance bole to actual length of the path distance bole to actual length of the path actually what is the actual length of the path actual length of the path of the keto 3 plus 4 that is equal to 7 meters 7 meters and displacement lieto displacement the shortest distance between the two points and line joining from initial to final 
ये इनिशियल पॉइंट होगा और ये फाइनल पॉइंट होगा इनको लाइन ज्वाइनिंग किए तो यस द शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम ए टू सी हाउ मच कितना होगा अंडर रूट फोर स्क्वेर प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर वॉट इज द वैल्यू फोर स्क्वेर सिक्सटीन प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर सो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज गोइंग अंडर रूट फोर स्क्वेर प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर सो दैट इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन प्लस नाइन उसका वैल्यू हो जाएगा ट्वेंटी फाइव रूट ट्वेंटी फाइव बोले तो फाइव फाइव मीटर्स सो so, अभी देखो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन पाथ किधर से गया था ए टू बी और बी टू सी यहां से यहां तक और यहां से यहां तक बट डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन पाथ इट्स क्रिएटिंग द न्यू पाथ एंड देर इज ओनली वी आर ज्वाइनिंग द लाइन फ्रॉम इनिशियल टू फाइनल इनिशियल से फाइनल हमने एक लाइन ज्वाइन किया था so that is goes to the displacement so see here once again displacement depends on path sorry distance depends on path displacement is the shortest distance between a and c so that is simply the example of how the displacement how the displacement depends on initial and final point and it is independent on path but distance depends on path followed by the body okay students let's see some examples here what is the distance and displacement conditions so let's move to the first example here a particle starts a body starts from the point a and moving along the circumference of the circle or circular path and again reaching the same point which is starting from this point again reaching the same point then what is the distance and as well as displacement what is the distance and as well as displacement so just now only we discussed about distance distance is depends on total length of the path distance depends on total length of the path how much it is it travel the path which is equal to circumference of the circle circumference of the circle how much 2 pi r circumference of the circle is 2 pi r then what about the displacement what about the displacement displacement is equal to final point and initial point both are coincide each other nothing but the displacement of the particle is zero displacement of the particle is zero so means particle starts from point a and again which reaches point means the distance depends on path followed by the body but displacement depends on initial and final points let's one more example a particle is moving from a to b along the cir cir circular path only but semi circular path so this what about the distance here the distance is equal to how much it is semi circular means Half of the circumference of the circle. Circumference of the circle by two. Circumference of the circle में half करो. Half किया तो क्या हो जाएगा? Two by r by two. मतलब कितना होगा? Simply pi r. Distance is pi r. Next displacement. Displacement is equal to s bar is equal to direct. किधर से किधर ए टू बी कितना है रेडियस आर दिए तो कितना होगा ए टू बी टू आर डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज इक्वल टू टू आर डिस्टेंस इज इक्वल टू पाई आर क्यू डिस्टेंस इज द एक्चुअल लेंथ ऑफ द पाथ डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज द शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस नथिंग बट शॉर्टकट डायरेक्टली टू आर लेट्स मूव टू वन मोर so here the particle traveled one fourth of the circumference so radius is r only then what is the distance here the distance is equal to simply s is equal to 2 pi r by 4 because one fourth of the circumference of the circle matlab uska answer kya ho jayega 5 r by 2. What is the answer for that? 
pi r by 2 is the distance. Then what about the displacement? Displacement is nothing but, see here, this is r and this is also r. This is initial position, now consider kare to ye final position. A shortcut liye to, this is the shortcut. That means you need to apply the Pythagoras theorem R R under root under root R square plus R square the value is goes to simply root 2 R under root R square plus R square the value is under root R. Distance is a pi R by 2 and displacement is root 2 into R. Let's see one more example. Particle starts from A and coming up to B by this path. By this path. This we can able to give three-fourth of the circumference of the circle. So then distance is equal to distance is equal to distance s is equal to 2 pi r by 2 pi r 3 fourth 3 by 4 into 2 pi r 3 by 4 into 2 pi r 3 fourth of the circumference. So that means how much you are getting distance? The distance goes to simply 3 by 2 pi r. Distance goes to 3 by 2 pi r. And displacement is, this is the initial point and this is the final point. And this will be the displacement. How much? Directly. Here will be wrote. How much? Root 2 r. Displacement is equal to simply root 2 into r. Distance is equal to 3 by 2 pi r. Displacement is equal to root 2 into r. So, here, see here, what are that we consider? First path is full circle. Semi-circular. Semi-circular and then uh, one-fourth of the circle. And then last three-fourth of the circular path. Like that, we saw. First condition, distance, 2 pi r. Displacement zero. Second condition distance pi r displacement two r. Third condition distance pi r by two displacement root two r. Fourth condition distance three by two pi r displacement is root two into r. Next, let's move to this. So here well, there is another condition. What is that? A particle is traveling from A to B. How much distance? 10 meters. 10 meters A to B and then B to C 5 meters. B to C 5 meters. 5 meters means 5 meters backward. 10 meters forward and 5 meters backward. Then what about the total distance and displacement? Let's see. Distance. Distance is nothing but again what we are saying that actual length of the path or total length of the path. What is the total length A to B plus B to C? Simple. A to B 10 meters. B to C 5 meters. So then distance is equal to simply 10 plus 5. 15, 15 meters. Distance is 15 meters. And comes to displacement. Displacement. S bar is equal to A to A to B. A to B. If you are considering according to the coordinate system, this direction we can consider like positive x-axis, and this direction we can consider like negative x-axis. Based on that, you can take A to B and then minus b to c why minus it is immediately means the particle is going like this and immediately change its direction to it nothing but forward and then backward forward plus backward minus because displacement depends on direction so that means forward how much 10 backward how much 5 so then what is the displacement Phi only and also we know that displacement depends on actual length of the path no only depends on initial and final points displacement and distance depends on actual length of the path 
Let's move. We have one more problem here. We'll solve one more problem. What is that? Let's see. Now here initial point is A. Yeah. Initial point is A. Particle is traveling from A to B and then B to C. And then B to C. See here display distance. Distance is equal to actual length of the path. A to B, A, B, and then B to C plus B, C, A, B plus B, C, A, B, how much? 5 meters, B, C, how much? 10 meters, whatever it is forward or backward, upward or downward, it's independent because distance is a scalar function. And what about the displacement? Distance S bar is equal to forward A to B minus B to C. A to B how much distance? 5. B to C minus 10. Why minus 10? It is completely backward. So the final displacement is minus 5 meters. Where minus represent here, plus represent, see here, here plus 5, plus 5 meters. Plus 5 meters represent the final position of the C in the positive x axis. 5 meters of the positive x axis means 5 meters of forward. 5 meters of forward. Here minus 5 represent the final position of the C is 5 meters of backward. It is the initial position of A. And what is the final position here? 5 meters forward. Again, 5 meters again. लेकिन यहाँ पे आने तक 5 मीटर्स पीछे, पीछे बोले तो बैकवर्ड, नथिंग बट माइनस 5 मीटर्स। सो दिस इज़ अ डिस्टेंस एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट एंड वी डिस्कस सम मोर प्रॉब्लम्स। ओके लेट्स सी हियर वी हैव टू इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चंस। फर्स्ट सी द लास्ट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन। ए ड्रंकर is a walking along the straight road. He's walking along the straight road. He takes five uh, steps forward. Five steps forward is like this. And then three steps backward. Every condition. He's going like that only repeating, repeating and so on. Five steps forward. One, two, three, four, five. Three steps backward. Then what is the distance here? Okay, that's later. That's later. And so on. Miss is repeating that. Each step is equal to one meter long, and it takes one second of time. Each step one meter long, one meter distance, and one second of time it takes. And there is a pit on the road. Generally, this is possible in our roads. Pits is uh, on the road 30 meters away from the straight road is 30 meters on the road 30 meters away from him him uh, the drunkard will fall into the pit after a time of after means after how much time he's fall into the pit means simply uh, just imagine he's the person he's the person he's moving on the straight road there is a pit a small hole like a small pit so this is how much distance? Uh, 13 meters. How much distance? 13 meters. 13 meters. So how much time is taken to fall in that? That is our problem. So uh, interesting question. Na? So see here. First thing, he personally starts from here. Is a traveling first to 5 meters. First five meters and then three meters backward. Five meters forward. Again, all three meters backward. Matlab either displacement kitna hoga? Two meters. Yes or no? Yes. And again he's starting from here. Again he's moving five meters forward. Five meters forward. And three meters backward. Or kitna that means how much displacement again? Two meters up to here 
और फिर भी फाइव मीटर्स फॉरवर्ड थ्री मीटर्स बैकवर्ड यहां तक कितना होगा फोर और यहां तक सिक्स होगा एंड अगेन फाइव मीटर्स फॉरवर्ड थ्री मीटर्स बैकवर्ड यहां तक कितना होगा एट और फाइव मीटर्स फॉरवर्ड कितना होगा थर्टी मतलब इज फॉल इन टू द पिट सो लेट सी हियर फर्स्ट वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग फर्स्ट इज मूविंग फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर फाइव मीटर्स फॉरवर्ड कितना टाइम लगेगा फाइव सेकेंड्स और थ्री मीटर्स बैकवर्ड कितना टाइम लगेगा थ्री सेकेंड्स फाइव सेकेंड्स माइनस थ्री सेकेंड्स लेने का नो ही इज कमिंग बैक बट टाइम इज नॉट कमिंग बैक टाइम इज नेवर कम्स बैक टाइम इज पॉजिटिव सो सी हियर so to travel 2 meters displacement how much time we take in once again see here 5 meters forward 5 seconds 3 meters backward 3 seconds nothing but he took 8 seconds to travel 2 meters from here to here 2 meters of displacement kitna time liya tha 8 seconds again another 2 meters another 8 seconds another 2 meters Another eight seconds. Another two meters. Another eight seconds. Means see here once again. From here to here, five meters forward, three meters backward. Means displacement is two meter. Time is eight seconds. Again from here to here, five meters backward, two minutes. Five meters forward, two meters backward. Matlab again eight minutes, eight seconds. Two meters displacement. Again from here to here, five meters forward. 3 meters back means 2 meters 8 seconds 5 meters forward 3 meters backward another 2 meters another 8 seconds so now from here 5 meters only forward after that he is not able to come back because he is fallen he is fallen into that how much time is taken 5 seconds just add the time 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 32 Plus five. How much time is taken by the person to fall into the pit? Is thirty-seven seconds. How much time is taken by the person to fall into the pit? Is thirty-seven seconds. Once again, see here. Once again, see here clearly. Person is walk starts from here. Is moving five meters forward, three meters backward. Means five meters forward, three meters. Means actually, how much time is taken? Eight seconds. How much displacement travel? Two meters. Five seconds for five meters forward, three meters backward. Eight seconds displacement two, displacement two, displacement two. Eight, eight, eight. But whenever he is reaching eight, from eight to five meters forward, thirteen meters. Our target came. So just he fall in that. Again he is not coming back. So that's why how much time is taken total? Thirty-seven seconds. So you can repeat the same problem. If the ditch or if the pit is at ten, eleven meters from the eleven meters from this point, how much time is taken? How much time is taken? How much time is taken? If it is eleven meter, we solved thirteen meters. If it is eleven meters, how much time taken? You can practice and you can solve it. And send me on the comment box. Okay, come here. Next problem. A particle is starts from the origin. Means it starts from the origin. First, you can take yes, it's the origin, and goes along the x-axis. Is moving along the x-axis to a point twenty meters comma zero to a point twenty meters comma zero, and then returns to the same line. Returns on the same line. It is returning on the same line to a point minus twenty meters comma zero. Minus twenty meters, comma zero. Then, yes, distance, s bar, displacement. What is the distance and displacement? That is. So previous one we saw. And second thing, the distance is equal. To, distance is equal. To. How much is time? This is the initial position here, and this is the final position. You can give the number. I I am giving here something j. So first is going i to j. And then it's coming from J to F. J to F. I to J distance how much? Twenty meters. J to F how much? Forty meters. So that is equal to distance is sixty meters. 
Remember one thing, distance never depends on direction. Next, displacement. Displacement is equal. It's going I to J minus J to F. Y minus backward. Displacement depends on direction. I to J, 20. J to F, J to F, how much? Minus 40, J to F. You don't consider this because from here to here, how much distance? 20. From here to here, how much distance? 20. So that's why I'm considering 20 plus 20 as 40. You don't consider again minus 20, na? From here to here, 20. And from here to here, 20. Backward, so that's why. So minus finally, how much its displacement is? Minus 20 meters. Minus stands for negative x axis. From here to here, how much is displacement? Minus 20 meters. This is distance and this is displacement. So, just now we discussed about the problems. And one more very important point related to distance and displacement. See here. If the particle is moving in a straight line. If your particle is moving in a straight line. So then, what about the distance and displacement? If the particle is moving in a straight line, then distance traveled by the body is equal to displacement traveled by the body. Distance and displacement both are same. Distance is equal to displacement. If the particle is moving in a straight line, distance is equal to displacement. In case, if the particle is moving in a curved path, curved path means like this, curved path. So then, what is happening? This is the distance and this is displacement. Distance and displacement. In this condition, distance is greater than displacement. Distance is greater than displacement. Distance is equal to displacement if the particle is moving in a straight line. If the particle is moving in a curved path, it is in straight line. Straight line. And this is curved path. Curved path. Distance, display, distance is greater than displacement. Finally, what we can say that whatever it, the distance, the distance always greater than or is equal to displacement. The distance always greater than or equal to displacement. Distance is always greater than or is equal to displacement. If it is the strike line, distance is equal to displacement. If it is the curved path, distance is greater than displacement. And next, so some conditions, distance may be become miss distance always positive and some conditions it may zero. Displacement, in just now only we saw displacement, sometimes it is positive, sometimes it's negative and sometimes it is zero also. But what are the possibilities to become distance zero? What are the possibilities to become distance zero? Only one possibility to become distance zero, the particle is at rest. If the particle is at rest, in this only one particular condition only, distance becomes zero. And remaining conditions, distance is not becomes zero because which is independent on path initial and final point. It depends on only path followed by the body. So that's why even a small inch that is displaced, there is a distance that's not becomes zero. But what are the possibilities to become so displacement zero? Here displacement zero, in this condition also displacement zero. If the particle is at rest, displacement is zero. And if the particle is returns to the initial point, what is the condition, uh, another condition to becomes zero, if the initial and final points both are coincide, initial and final points both are coincide, initial and final points both are coincide, initial point and final point, final point, if both are coincide, both are coincide, 
so then what is happening here displacement zero but distance is not zero in this condition distance is not zero what is the condition only condition distance become zero particle is a pressed condition then only distance zero displacement here zero and again final and initial point coincide means particle is going forward and again coming backward to the same point displacement zero and particle is moving in a circular path in a circular path again which complete the displacement is zero and next we'll discuss the motion parameters in the next session we discuss about speed and as well as velocity